Welcome back to Here's Next Door. Thank you all for joining us for another Station of Rigs. We're in the UP of Michigan, Upper Peninsula. We're doing the Hubble Fire Company, and we're going to be taking a look at one of their very special rigs. Well, let's go take a look. Their firefighters here, and you know, he's one of the volunteers that run this truck. Hey, Rick. Hey, nice, Blake. Nice to meet you, brother. Nice to meet you. This is a very cool truck. I took a look online, saw a couple of pictures sent to me when we were corresponding with your guy, and I really want to know more about this truck. Can you tell us about this truck? Oh yeah, let me uh, let me get out and I'll uh, we'll run through it. All right. First of all, what truck is this? I don't recognize the front end. That looks more like an airport truck. This is. This is. This used to be an airport, you know, attack vehicle. Okay. So because it's got you know specialized. Delu uh, deluge guns okay on the front so you don't even the driver doesn't even have to get out to fight the fire you flip a couple switches and you're flowing water right to the front that's pretty cool to see not just on uh airport but now using it in the civilian world right and this is this is we turned it into our extrication truck okay to fight you know vehicle fires and whatnot so that does help a lot in case we can't get close to that vehicle especially with these newer teslas they burn so hot and so long this would be the perfect vehicle to that, extinguish that's it. thinking yeah can you show us what's on the inside yeah of course on the inside here we've got the valves and such for the guns i was just talking about yep. here of course, all of our various different controls. Now this goes back to some of the older trucks. Yes. You got power. You don't have the power windows. You don't have the power seats and right. stuff like that. You do have an air ride, but yep. you know this reminds me of some of the old school trucks. What year is this truck? This is a '91 Amtec. Okay. How comfortable is it to ride? It's actually a really smooth ride. Yeah. Yep. For being a cab over, it's actually real smooth. Yeah, it's a cab over, and I notice that the tires are pretty much the same size. So, is it four wheel drive? This is a four wheel drive. We've taken this when we had our Father's Day flood a couple years ago. We were able to drive where nobody else could go. Okay. We this thing did some crazy stuff during that time, and it was it was pretty cool. Right. And being way up in the Upper Peninsula, I know you guys get a lot of snow. About how much snow do you guys get a year? We get roughly around 300, 300 inches. Three hundred. Yep. Wow, I'm used to maybe 30 inches right, a right. year. So 300 is phenomenal. Yep. And having a vehicle like this to make it through there would be very good. It does very well in the winter, you'd be surprised. Okay, can you walk me around, tell me what yeah. you got? Yep, no problem. I love the open cab in the back too. Yes. That's where I started back this, in the day. That, it's a fun experience to ride in, yeah. I'll tell you that. Yeah. You know, you're not used to that kind of thing, but we keep our airbags here that we use to lift or stabilize vehicles. Okay. Yep, those get tucked back there. Yeah. And oh, back in this, uh, and it has a pump on it. Yes. Right. So you can flow this just like a regular engine. Yep. It's got or a, off the front. Exactly. Okay. And it's got a 650 gallon tank. Okay. Yep. And it, it works. It yeah. works very well. And then just looking down the side, it looks like a toolbox. It is. <laughs> it's essentially a giant mobile toolbox. Yeah. Really. With all the different compartments. So so walk me through some of the compartments you yeah. got. Yeah. So right here, this is where we keep our jaws of life. Okay. We've got our spreaders, and then in behind here is our cutters. Okay which we use you know cut the doors open such and so forth get yep. you out of there yeah and then in this next one here this is where we keep our sawzall and our uh, electric bag there yeah and behind it is actually a special tool that i want to show you guys okay get this out of the way love the milwaukee's milwaukee's making a big name for themselves in the fire service they are they help so us out if any milwaukee representatives are watching our show get a hold of me maybe i can promote you a little bit more oh this wow is our ram right we use this to, if we got to do a, what's called a dash roll. Yeah. You know, if you're pinned underneath the dash, can't get out. Yeah. We use this and the special tool right here put together, and we can flip pretty much fold the front of your car away from you. That's pretty cool. So to we can see. get you out. Yeah, yeah. Now you're you're still sticking with the hydraulic tools. Yes. This right now we are we are working towards getting electric. Okay. We want to switch to electric because you know it's lighter. There's good and bad about both. Right. You know, I've used the hydraulic tools for many many years. Haven't really had any issues once you learn how to use them properly. Exactly. Uh, but what's happening is they're switching over the electric because then I don't have to have the the power plant for it I don't have to have all the hose uh, but they are heavier just yes, letting you know yes so. yes and then back here in these two compartments we've got our bigger pump yeah that we run we have to run the cutters with okay but we also have a secondary mini pump nice with you know gas and such extra lines to okay. run everything right so we can run every single tool we have here with both of these in unison okay yep okay there's no no. Now, I'm noticing you with the cabinets here. You're, you're doing a little push here. This yep. is kind of the old school thing yep. that I've seen that many people haven't talked about. What is that? 
Uh, it's just a spring-loaded system to keep the door open so you can get your tools out easier. Right. And you can't, it's really hard to try to close it. You gotta give it a little bit of a push and then it'll it's just, just that simple. It's that simple technology, uh, or engineering I should say, because it's really not technology, of using a spring. You can't push it in, but if you push it sideways, it folds right off. Yep. Yeah, it, it, some of those things I miss on the, the newer fire trucks. Right. Some of the, the, the very basic stuff that doesn't break, those right. are the kind of things I like to see. Yeah, it, it's really handy. I, I loved it. When I first joined, I didn't know how to open it. Right. <laughs> and back here, we have a booster line for emergency. Okay. We Back Quick. where I come from, we can call that a trash line. Trash or line? Like, okay. Yep. 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 I've, I've heard it called that. We've, uh, we've, we only had to use it once. It's a light little fire on a car. Yeah, we Nothing use them crazy. a lot of times for uh, mulch fires, little brush fires Just, here and there. Yeah, small stuff. Yes, yeah, exactly, exactly. Yep, that's what the, and you know, we've got extra tools on the back, like a Halligan right there, ready to go. Okay, and you carry hose on this, about yep. how many feet of hose you carry? Uh, we carry around, I think it was 200, okay. 200 feet on this one, because usually when this one rolls, our other uh, pumper one will roll with it. Okay. So we've always got extra line okay. in case we need it. You know. Is your area pretty much hydrated? Do you have to use a tanker? Um, how do you, what do you guys have in the area? It's a mix. It's a, it's a heavy mix. Okay. I mean, we have a lot of hydrants like in town here, but like if you're going out towards Boot Jackway now, that's where the tanker comes in. Okay. And we got to start shuttling water. Or if we're close enough to a water source, we'll draft. Okay. We just do a lot of drafting. We've, There's a lot of water around here. We got a lot of water. <laughs> We're surrounded, so, you know. Okay. Yeah. Now, tell me a little bit more about the area that you're in. This is up in the upper Michigan. You're the UP of Michigan, right? Yep. You're almost the farthest point forward or a high that we can get, yep. right? We're actually above many of the Canadians. Yeah. You know, is it more rural area? Is it more industrial? What do you, what do you it, guys kind of service? It's, we're more rural. Okay. You know, like we we're, we're our uh, jurisdictions are two different kinds because we've got our fire jurisdiction where we'll go, but our extrication goes. We we'll go all the way up to the bridge, the lift bridge. Okay. We will go for so past Stellar Bay and such and so right. forth. Right. We cover that area. Okay. So you do it. I mean, forty one. What I came in on. Mm -hmm. It's a pretty major thoroughfare so you can have the audio accents there too oh yeah uh, but you also have to get specialized in extrication of heavy equipment such as tractors and stuff like that if you're in yep. a rural area and you guys take extra classes to, to learn how to do that right oh yeah yep they offer all kinds of classes for us awesome yep you can get trained in pretty much anything Okay. If, you put your if mind somebody to wants to join you guys, you maybe they, this is the first time they're seeing the video yeah. uh, or any of our videos, and they're like, "Hey, I want to volunteer." Mm -hmm. How do they go about volunteering for you? Well, you know, you can come down on uh, Tuesdays, Tuesday nights, every first uh, Tuesday of each month. We have a meeting. You can come and put, uh, get an application. Okay. Or try to contact one of us. Okay. Uh, do they have to have any education coming to it? I know no. you're a firefighter, I'm a firefighter, but maybe someone in the area just moved here mm -hmm. or they retired from their regular job and they want to help out. Do they have to have Fire One? Uh, they have to go through schooling, yes. Okay, they, but do they have to have that prior to be joining? No, no. You, you, uh, when I joined, I didn't have my Fire One yet. I had to go through schooling and whatnot. Okay. Yep. Okay. So if anybody buddies out there watching these videos that you're in the Hubble area and you want to volunteer and give back to your community, this is an awesome way to do that. The community really needs you. These guys really need you. We're always looking more for more volunteers. Across America, everybody's lacking volunteers or even recruitment for paid career. Uh, we're interested in you. Come on down on a Tuesday? A first Tuesday of every month. All right. We'll see you there. Before we move on to the rest of the truck, do us a favor, hit subscribe, hit notification, smash those like buttons, make a comment or two of what you think about the truck, and uh, we'll keep bringing you more. Let's continue on. All right. So on this side, is we've got, this is where we keep most of our cribbing. Okay. Yep, you know, stabilization and whatnot. We got more cribbing on the other side in the top. I'm just a little too short for that, so <laughs> we let the taller guys handle that part. Right, you know? right. And then we've got uh, tarps and such. Oh, that's the wrong one. That's, more cribbing. Uh, more cribbing, yeah, <laughs> yeah. And the cribbing, to explain it to the viewers that may not know, we do get a lot of younger viewers. What is cribbing? Well, cribbing is what we use it. It's, obviously, it's wood blocks. Okay. And there's many different shape sizes, wedges. We make little steps and stuff, but it's mainly to stabilize the vehicle so it doesn't move anymore while we're trying to get the person out okay. or, you know, fall on us. You right, know? right. Um, in, this one, in this cabinet here, we've got our strainer and such for drafting. Okay. You know, right and out of the way. your hard suction right above it. Yep. And a couple ball valves, just in case somebody else needs to tie into a hydrant. If we're on a hydrant, sure. they can tie in without us having to shut the hydrant down. Okay. And we've got our tarps here because, you know, a lot of car crashes, there's a lot of glass. Yeah. And you want it a little bit easier cleanup, you know, we got to break a window, such and so forth. We've also got blankets in here too. Okay. In this same bin. 
to put over, let's say you're you're trapped in the uh, front seat of your vehicle, right? And we got to break that window to get you out. Yeah. Well, we'll try to cover you with a blanket so you know you're not getting. As a paramedic, I really appreciate you guys taking the step to do that. You know, all too often I get in in the vehicle while you guys are doing your work to extricate us, I'm inside that vehicle and I'm gonna be underneath that blanket with them. Mm -hmm. And that really protects us, not only from all the debris falling in, but it also kind of takes away their visual and the, it doesn't make it as scary. Right. It's just me and the patient underneath that blanket, talking and letting you guys do your work. Right, and that's one of the big things they did stress when we were going through the extrication training is you wanna keep that person calm, talk to them, let them know what you're gonna do. If we're gonna cut the roof off, we're gonna tell you, we're cutting the roof off, but you're gonna be safe Somebody will be in the car with them and they'll be covered so that they're not getting hit with sparks, glass, etc. Right, right. So. The only question I have, because it is open cabin, you're yeah. old school in that. Oh yeah. You get 300 inches of snow. How cold does it get back there riding? You'd be surprised, not very cold because the motor is right there. Okay. So you're all you gotta do is lean up against that and you're gonna be warm. Because <laughs> I have run in the back of this right. to our excavation during the middle of winter. Right. And it, it's not too bad. First few minutes before the motor warms up, you're, 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 you're cold. cold. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but also, you're in gear too. So sure, sure, know. sure. I like the safety bar that you still have on it. Oh yeah. Uh, and everything else. And up top is your pump panel. Yep. And is it more electric, or because it's in the night, is it still the old levers? It's the old lever. The old levers. Yep. Man, this is absolutely beautiful. I thank you for taking your time out of your day and showing us this. You know, tell me a little bit more about yourself. What got you into firefighting? Um, my grandfather, he was a fireman for Dollar Bay for over 40 years. Okay. And um, my cousins were firemen at uh, Ohio, so okay. it kind of just was in the family. It's in the blood. Yeah. Yeah, I, I understand that. So, you know, it, we see that across America, many of the fire stations that we're going to, you know, the, the volunteer stations and even the paid stations are legacy stations. You got grandpa, grand, great grandpa, dad, brothers, sisters, all those joining. Right. And that really creates that brotherhood. I noticed in the background we have a couple other guys that were kind of watching Oh us. yeah. Can you introduce us to some of these guys? Yeah, yeah. This is my cousin right here, Christopher Benson. All right. Nice to meet you, Christopher. This is John Gradoff. All right. Nice to meet you, John. Thank you. That's Lars Garropy. All right. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Thank you for taking your time out of your day and uh, opening up your house and showing us your beautiful truck. Of course. So we really appreciate it. And you guys are all volunteer firemen across the board, right? Yep. But how many fire calls do you guys get a year? Uh, I think we average roughly 70 maybe. Okay. Maybe a little less. So, okay. It, it yeah. depends. And about how many volunteers do you have in your department? I'd say roughly 15. Okay. Yeah, we're still looking for more. We're always, always have our doors open. Yeah, we're talking it, so. Rick at the back of the truck there. We're always looking for more volunteers. Always. So yeah. in the Can't area. Can have come, enough help. Yeah, come on, on, come on down. Well, guys, I really appreciate you, you know, taking the time out of your day, like I said, and coming down and showing me your truck. It's a beautiful truck, something we haven't seen before. Uh, so hopefully everybody enjoys it. As we end this video, do us a favor, hit that subscribe, hit that notification, smash those like buttons. It really helps our algorithm. Make some comments. Tell us what you think. Do you have a truck similar to it? We'll see you again next week. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us for another Station of Rigs. We are back in, no, I don't want to say back, sorry truck to go by. Another one behind you. Like they're definitely uh, a pattern. And I'm ready when you are. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. We're doing the Hire Hubble Fire Company and we're going to be doing Yep. Welcome back to Heroes Next Door. Thank you all for joining us for another Station of Rigs. This is very special because we're in the upper Michigan. 